guys and welcome back to my channel today is gonna be the perfect corset video for beginners and I have the pattern down below of course for those of you who have been waiting for this video I am so so sorry I have been sick for a few weeks now so I'm kind of getting back into the whole routine of making videos and just being myself I'm getting back to myself I feel like a zombie also comment down below on what you think about my hair because I'm extra pinky pinky winky as my boyfriend calls it <laughs> or it calls me not it <laughs> whatever anyways comment down below this is a new look what you think <laughs> okay so without further ado come on let's go and let's have some fun with this corset video this holographic vinyl is from Joann's and I wasn't gonna leave the store without it. <laughs> now the paper pattern has a total of six pieces which completes one half of the corset, meaning you will have to cut two of each piece. And the first step is very simple, is to get all these pieces in this order and sew all of them together using the half inch seam allowance that is already included in the pattern. Now, if you're using a vinyl like I am, it's really best to use these sewing clips versus pins. You don't want to puncture any extra holes in the vinyl since it's not forgiving like most fabrics. Once there's a hole, it's always going to be there. It could end up being visible and end up revealing any mistakes. Also, please have mercy on your fingers. I have been there, done that. They're going to ache from trying to push those pins in through that thick vinyl. It's definitely gonna take the fun away from the project. Now, like mentioned earlier, once you have the two halves of the corset, sew it down the middle to complete the entire thing. Now, I bet that everyone will do this once the outer shell is done. <laughs> I couldn't wait to see how it started to look and I was falling in love. Repeat the whole process with the lining using the same pattern, cutting the same number of pieces, but this time an iron will be involved. I always say it's optional, but really, I mean, just do it. It's only gonna make the end result look so much more professional and neat. When pressing, open up the seam allowances, but unfortunately, this can only be done with the lining, at least in my case, because I cannot and will not iron my vinyl because who knows what's gonna be left of it if I put heat to it. <laughs> now, whether you're working with vinyl or not, trim the seam allowances of the outer fabric and also very important along the curves especially where the bust is cut out small triangles in the seam allowance it will help get rid of the bulk in those areas and if you're not working with vinyl after these steps press the seams the same way as the lining you want to have a neat looking finish on the outside as well probably more than the inside some would say Okay, so to really get this whole thing going, place the lining on top of the outer shell, both face to face, meaning the right sides are together. Match up all the edges and corners, and now would be the time to see and make sure everything aligns good in terms of seams. The seams of the lining and the seams of the outer shell should match up together as well. Check for any bubbling, because sometimes maybe the lining came out a bit smaller than the outer shell for whatever reason, because we're all humans. Now would be the time to check all of that. And if there's any inconsistency, adjust the lining versus the outer shell since it's easier to take the stitches out of there. Now, what you're sewing are the sides and top only. Leave the bottom untouched for now. Before you start flipping it right side out, cut the corners. This eliminates the extra fabric and allows you to have a nice looking corner instead of a lumpy hat mess. And when I say corners, I mean that triangular corner at the bust point as well. Yeah, that it needs to go. <laughs> now, at the curves, Clip some notches, clip as close to the stitch line as you can without cutting into the stitch line. This will allow you to flip it nicely without a struggle and have both layers lay flat.
Want to have a right side out, match up the bottom edges of the lining and the outer shell together. Clip it in place for the meantime. Now, because I was working with vinyl, the top wasn't going as smoothly as it would have if it was all fabric. I had to put some work into it. I had to force the lining to the back to make sure that it doesn't stick out from the front and pull the edges together. But once again, make sure when you're aligning the edges, you're not creating a bubble. This will happen if the lining is much shorter than the outer shell. And it's definitely something to really keep in mind. And if it does happen, lay everything flat. You might have to cut the outer shell a bit on the bottom to match up with the lining more. You will have a slightly shorter corset, but it's better than having a bubble. Trust me. Now, this is a Teflon foot and it's used for sewing leather and pleather. I didn't use it earlier because the vinyl I'm working with has a fabric backing, but you might need it from the beginning if you're working with other vinyls that might not have that. Now, this next step is sewing right in the middle of the seam. It's basically stitching in the ditch and it's the first step in preparation for our boning channels. It might be just a little challenging, but this is not a race. Take it easy, nice and slow. <laughs> now, if we were sewing the corset the quote unquote professional way, the way that I was taught in school, which is a bit more complicated, that's why I didn't wanna do it that way for now, we wouldn't need to do this step. The lining and the outer shell would already be attached together at every seam, but that's for another video because you can't have too many corsets, right? <laughs> Now there's different kinds of bonings that you can use for corsets. I'm using this polyester boning and you can actually sew right through it if needed. The width of my boning is 12 millimeters, which is just under half an inch. You will need to figure out how far away from the middle seam you need to sew and that depends on the width of the boning that you're using. So two stitch lines, one on each side of the middle seam, which would create two channels at each seam. If you start to notice, once you do these top stitches, the vinyl starts to lay flatter and starts to look a lot better and more like a bomb ass corset <laughs> now once all my channels were done I still didn't like the top portion it wasn't laying flat enough it looked like it was bubbling up it, it was just screaming for an edge top stitch so that's what I did I'm glad I did it because if I did it and I didn't like it I would have no choice but to still keep it <laughs> So some way, somehow, my outer shell part of the corset ended up a bit longer than the lining. So I simply trimmed off about a quarter inch of the vinyl. Yes, that would make a quarter inch shorter corset, but it wasn't a big deal for me. It happens. Now for each channel, figure out how long to cut your boning. My first tip is to wrap the ends of the boning with masking tape. I wish I did that. It would make it easier inserting the boning. It would slide in better. Now my second tip, if your channel happens to be a bit more narrow than the boning, you can cut away a tiny portion of it to make it skinnier and it would glide right in. That can only be done with this polyester type boning, but it's not super professional to be honest but it can solve problems Next step is to finish off the bottom edge. I'm using this half inch double fold bias tape that I got from Amazon. You can always make your own using bias tape makers, but I was enjoying the pleasure of not having to do so. <laughs> now, the way that you wanna do it is aligning all edges together, leaving a small tail at the end, which is then going to be wrapped underneath like so. The first stitch line that you're gonna do is in the first crease that's closest to the edge. Now, 
Make sure that the bias tape is a bit longer than the distance you need to cover the bottom of the corset because once you reach close to the end, leave a tail about three quarters past the edge of the corset and wrap it underneath as well, the same as we did on the other side. And then continue sewing to the end. Next, flip everything up, fold it on the outer crease first, then fold it in the middle, which would complete your edge binding. Do a top stitch and we cleaned off all the edges beautifully. The last thing we need to do is just install grommets. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll put more polls and I really appreciate that you guys voted so thumbs up for that. Alright guys but I'll see you at my next video so thank you again and bye!